Block Island line is a mighty fine line. I wish I could sing. I would just love to sing that first verse of the famous Rock Island song. But I can't sing, so I'll have to tell you about it. It was popular back in the days when the Rock Island was in its heyday, when they were operating over 7,200 miles of track in 18 states. 1,800 of those miles were in Iowa. So Iowa and the Rock Island were hand in hand for a good many years. In the, in the past nine years, I have written some over 400 stories that the, pre, uh, that the Iowa City Press Citizen has run about the historical things in Iowa City. And there have been a number of them that I have written about the Rock Island. And I've written a number about the Rock Island because it, there is so much of excitement connected with the railroad. There's a certain drama connected with it. Uh, the railroad is different than the ordinary corporation. People seem to get uh, into the spirit of the, of the system. So uh, I, I think that uh, the Rock Island does have a great deal of history to, uh, to tell Iowa City. But let's roll the calendar back, uh, turn the calendar back 126 years and some three months. That would be to New Year's Eve 1855, and that was a most historic day for Iowa City. That was the day that the railroad got to Iowa City. It was not called the Rock Island then, it was called the Mississippi and Missouri Railroad. And it got to Iowa City that, that day. But yeah, every town on the frontier was anxious, frantic, to get a railroad, because if they got a railroad, that was the thing that, that made the town. If they didn't get a railroad, why then the thing began to die and wither. So everybody was after the railroad if they could get it, and Iowa City was particularly aggressive because this was the capital of the territorial, or the capital of the state of Iowa at the time. So Iowa City was very, very anxious to get it. The citizens were so anxious that they got a purse together, $50,000. And they told the Rock Island or the Mississippi and Missouri Railroad, as it was then, that if they got to Iowa City by January 1st, 1856, they would give them this $50,000 bonus. Well, that night, that New Year's Eve, at 9 o'clock, the railroad was still 300 yards from the station that was then on South Johnson Street. And of course, the railroad was frantic trying to get there but one of the stipulations was that they had to get to Iowa City before midnight with a train of cars, with a locomotive and a train of cars. And so they were worried whether they were going to make it. The citizens of Iowa City were anxious for them to make it, and they all came down to the track that night. They helped lay the ties. They helped lay the rails. They built huge bonfires along the track because it was a bitter cold night. And so they... they uh, worked together and just as the church bells were ringing out the old year the uh, ringing out the old year the train the locomotive and the train of cars pulled into the station well that was the, <clears throat> the making of Iowa City because the pioneers then could come right to Iowa City before they had to come by by a prairie schooner they'd had to come on horseback afoot on the Mississippi to Muscatine so it was very difficult for them to get to Iowa City. But with the railroad, they were able to get here, and of course the town grew by leaps and bounds. Uh, from a population of around 2,500, they say that it, it more than doubled by 1857 when the city directory was put out. Well, anyhow, the, uh, the other towns that west of Iowa City kept clamoring for the railroad to extend. Well, uh, it, it was a problem of finance, and so they couldn't move it on too quickly, and uh, they had to get the money together. They had to get the bridge, the expensive bridge over the Iowa River. And so they had, uh, they had problems. And it wasn't until 1860 that they got the bridge finished and started the track across the west side. They got to Homestead in August 1860 and the first train load of stock went from Homestead to Chicago that Saturday night in August. After that, they ran a train load of stock into Chicago from Homestead every night. The railroad got as far as Marengo in 1860, to Grinnell in 1862, to Des Moines in 1867, and to Council Bluffs in 1869. 
So it was a very vital part of the of the uh, development of of Iowa. But uh, there were there were many interesting things. Uh, uh, in, in the, after they built the bridge in eighteen uh, in uh, yeah in eighteen uh, fifty nine and sixty, they developed it. They built it stronger in nineteen o one. And after they got it, a better bridge in there, then people used it uh, for to go back and forth across the river. And there were some exciting things that happened. Uh, back in the days of the saloons, uh, people used to go to the bars, and when they'd close at 10 o'clock, why well, they'd get in the wagon or the buggy, and the horses knew the way home. And uh, but one one night, a man was going across the uh, going home, and the, he he was asleep. He didn't know what was going on, but his horses knew the way. And but this time, instead of going down to the Benton Street Bridge, they turned at the Rock Island tracks here. And they went across the railroad bridge over here uh, to the far end, uh, and and um, they got all the way across the river, all the way across the water, and then the team somehow stumbled and they fell to their death down below. What happened to the man when he got out? Nobody knows. But anyhow, he woke up the next morning in a hotel in town. Several people wanted to tell me who the man was, and I said, "No, I don't want to know who he was. I just want to know the story." And then after the story appeared in the paper, a man called me and he said, say, you know who that man was uh, that, that went, uh, whose team went across the river? And I said, no, and I don't want to know. And he said, well, I'm going to tell you, it was my drinking uncle. <laughs> well, anyhow, little Lizzie Cook was walking across that bridge in 1877. She was, I had her arms full of packages. She was 10 years old. And when she got in the middle of the bridge, that terrible windstorm that blew the steeple off of the, of the uh, uh, Presbyterian Church, Old Brick, uh, caught little Lizzie, and she let her bundles fly to the wind, and she she uh, lay down on the tracks and clutched some of those bolts as tight as she could. And finally, when the, the storm had subsided, uh, she walked on home, and when she got home, the threads of these bolts were in her hands. She had clutched it so tight. They tell another story about a man from Grinnell that got on the train one night at 10.30, and he got off at every station to see what it looked like. And uh, when the train would stop, he'd get off. Well, when the train stopped in Iowa City, it was not at the station. It was where they, the switch turned off back here to make it double track. And uh, he, he, the train stopped, and it was still over the river. He stepped off, and he plunged to his death in the river. Uh, they didn't find the body till a, for a couple of days, and then they didn't know who it was. And it was quite a problem before they found out who it was. So When people talk about the Rock Island Depot, they always think of this depot behind me here. And that's understandable, because that's the depot most of us can remember. But actually, when the, when the Rock Island first got to Iowa City, it was uh, four blocks to the east, at the south end of Johnson Street. That was the first depot that was there in 1856 when the railroad got here. And the, the station was there for 42 years before this one was built in 1898. But that station down there, certainly a lot of drama unfolded, a lot of, of uh, historic bits in Iowa City's history. Uh, originally, as I once said earlier, that the, uh, the pioneers had to come to Iowa City by hor on horseback, by prairie schooner, uh, some even walked. But with the railroad, they could come right to Iowa City and the uh, the population of Iowa City grew very, very rapidly because of that. And besides the regular pioneers that came over, came on from Pennsylvania, from Ohio, from Indiana, uh, there were those who, immigrants who came, maybe they'd been in this country a year, but they were planning on coming west. And so they did come on to Iowa City by rail. And I can imagine how, what a dramatic situation it was for them. How those people must have been worried as they got off the train. Some of them couldn't even speak English. The largest ethnic group to come to Iowa City were the Bohemians. And there were about 3,000 of them who came during those early, uh, well, the late 1850s and the early 1860s. And many of the Bohemians uh, settled in the northeast part of Iowa City. Uh, many people always think of the Bohemians as all being in Goose Town. That's where they used to uh, let the geese out and they just wandered all over and at night, why, they'd all come back home to the right places. Well, all the Bohemians didn't live there. Some of them lived farther uh, northeast. 
but most of them did live either in the northeast part of Iowa City or uh, some of them on the farms between here and Solon. The second largest group to get to Iowa City and on the railroad, most of them, were the Germans. And many of them settled in the northeast part of Iowa City. But the Germans didn't have the tendency to stay together quite as well as the Bohemians. They, they sort of assimilated into the city. The Bohemians uh, maintained their culture. They taught their children the Bohemian language at the Third Ward School. And so they, they maintained their, their uh, uh, native customs longer than the other t than the Germans. The third group to get to Iowa City were the Irish, and they settled to the south here, and more in Iowa City. And a little later, some of them were west on the farms towards uh, towards uh, Oxford and Parnell. But uh, then uh, later, uh, they uh, they uh, they'd all most of them were, were uh, members of St. Mary's Church, and then they wanted to have their own church, so they did build. St. Mary's Church, which is just a couple of blocks up here. And the fourth ethnic group, the smallest of the four, uh, were the Welsh, who were southwest of Iowa City, uh, down near what is known as the Welsh Church. Uh, one group that came to Iowa City during that period, uh, and it's, uh, many people don't realize it, but the Mormons uh, brought 2,400 of, uh, of the people they had uh, brought over from Europe. They called them saints. They brought them as far as Iowa City, and they came to Iowa City because this was the end of the railroad. This was the, this was the, uh, the, the farthest west you could get on a railroad. In fact, the Rock Island was the first railroad to cross the Mississippi River. It was the first railroad that was between Minneapolis and New Orleans, and it was the first railroad to penetrate into the interior. Sure. Well, well, of course, uh, the, the development of Iowa City commercially was, was uh, greatly enhanced, greatly moved up when the railroad got here because they could bring manufactured articles from the east to Iowa City. Before that, most everything had to be made here in Iowa City. But now they could bring uh, manufactured articles to Iowa City. And uh, for those four years that this was the terminus of the railroad, uh, the mercantile uh, businesses uh, they, where they would bring in merchandise, all types, uh, would there'd be wagons, uh, 10 and 12 wagons lo lined up. Uh, this is right across from the First National Bank and the Hotel Jefferson, W.B. Daniels, and they'd line all these, uh, these uh, wagons up and they'd get merchandise and they'd go out 20, 30, even as far as 40 miles. So it, it did build up Iowa City uh, with many of these uh, different uh, uh, businesses getting, getting started. Well, anyhow, the railroad was a great thing for Iowa City, and it did start getting things uh, on the move. And it was a good thing it came right when it did, because that's when the capital of the state was moved to Des Moines. Des Moines was more near the, cent more near the center of population, and so they did want to get it uh, farther west. And right at the time when they moved the capital out, the railroad got here, so it did sort of break, uh, break the loss that we would have had otherwise. And then the university got started at the same time, and so that was uh, help. Now this other station was built in 1898. It was built at a cost of $25,000, and it was considered to be one of the best uh, 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 stations, depots, on the Rock Island. It was named the Wright Station after a man named Wright, an attorney in Des Moines, who had been very helpful to Iowa City in getting uh, the depot. But this station also had very many, had many interesting things develop here. The, uh, the, uh, well, of course, the Civil War soldiers went from the other depot. Uh, there, were, there were two Civil War camps in Iowa City. One was down here at Wardway, and the other was out near Longfellow School. And many of those boys came here uh, preparatory to going to the Civil War uh, had never seen a train before. This was the first train that had, had penetrated into Iowa. And when these boys were uh, at the camp, when well, they'd hear a train whistle, they'd all run down to look at it because it was a, a great uh, event for them. Unfortunately, all those boys didn't get back. Sad. But uh, from this station, uh, the Spanish-American War veterans left. The, um, the uh, World War veterans in 1918 left from this station. Uh, uh, World War I soldiers left from this depot. World War II, Korean War. But there were some joyful things that happened here, too. There were lots of companies, lots of families had relatives come, 
and it was great excitement when they'd come down here and the relatives had come. There were many wedding parties uh, that, that took off on the train. Uh, I, I've seen, there's been all kinds of rice uh, thrown on this platform up here, and people, uh, uh, lots of times would come down and they say, well, there's been a wedding couple go out because of all of the rice that's here. But anyhow, they, there were many interesting things. The, the Rose Bowl team left from here in 1956. Uh, the, uh, the championship Iowa football team in, 18, in 1900, uh, that was the, they were the champions of the West. They left from here, they came back to this depot. The championship teams of 1921 and 22 uh, left from this depot. Uh, the, the Yale, uh, the team that defeated Yale in 1922 left from this station. And those, on those long trips, they wouldn't get back until Monday. And the 1939 Ironmen left from this depot. So there were lots of interesting uh, sporting events that came and uh, left from here and came back. So it has a rich, rich history, uh, the same as the other station. And it's sad that the Rock Island is not here anymore because it contributed so much to the de development and the growth of Iowa City.